thank you for meeting with, with me today. So can you start by letting us know what, what is your name and tell us about your current position and academic background? Okay, so my name is Julie Kerr. I'm a mechanical engineer, uh, graduated from UBC, and I specialized in the biomedical option. I now work at a local biomedical device company, uh, Delphi Medical, and they develop tourniquets. And so I've got, I wear a number of different hats uh, where I work. Um, so my position uh, scope ranges from quality assurance and regulatory affairs to biomedical engineering and uh, research and development, as well as project management. So depending on what projects I'm working on, I can be wearing a one hat one day and another hat another day. That's really interesting. So building on that, what would a typical day at work look like for you? Yeah, so with all the different responsibilities I have, one of the biggest things is time management and just evaluating um, to the best of my ability and, and with the um, knowledge of my bosses, kind of what are my priorities. So if I'm doing project management, um, a lot of the day might be involved in looking through my Gantt chart and um, assessing the different schedules and touching base with our project engineers and uh, reviewing where they're at. Um, the project management duties kind of blend a lot with the research and development activities. So I'll take part in usability engineering and usability studies or working on design inputs for sometimes risk management. Um, so all of the things that you learn about in engineering for the design cycle process. So starting from the user needs through design um, inputs and requirements to specifications to the ideation and creation to prototyping and um, finally through verification and validation to the final pro product. So my project management role encompasses the entire scope of those activities and then my research and development scope narrows in on some of the actual work and development in all those different areas so my day-to-day -day kind of depends on where we're at in the project i'm gonna say i'm not what i envisioned to be the typical engineer when i learned about engineering in high school hmm. um, and one of my own personal traits is i thrive on a lot of uh doing a lot of different things. Um, so I wouldn't say, I, and I never came into engineering thinking that I would be on SolidWorks for eight hours a day being a designer. That wasn't what I envisioned for myself, nor was it a particular strength in, in my skill set. Um, so my favorite part of the projects are usually centered around clinical design and research. So, um, you know, that can involve like the actual hard engineering aspects and, and the calculations and it can also involve like how do you create a study how do you make sure you're maintaining ethics principles um, you know how do you talk to someone and talk someone through a study but the one thing that I had difficulty viewing with uh, medicine is just the long long time it takes for schooling and education mm -hmm. and you know I'm a big proponent of trying to find balance in your life and for me, I thought going to school for 10 years isn't necessarily the life I want to live. So I applied to engineering really with the mindset that I wanted to do biomedical. I thought it was the perfect way to marry my love of physics and math with my interest of biomedical or like, yeah, medical design. Um, and so being involved in that field in a somewhat indirect way. So you are involved heavily with BEST as well, which is the Biomedical Engineering student team at UBC. Um, and so what was your most valuable, the most valuable thing you learned from that experience as well? So I learned many, many different things from BEST. And that was a student team that I joined in my first year. It was the first year the student team was around. Oh, wow. um, yeah, I saw this, at, uh, you know, this pop up on Facebook that was like, biomedical engineering student team. I'm like, I like biomed, I'll join. All of a sudden, because I stuck around with a team that was very new, I started to like really progress up in seniority on the team at a very young age. We were prototyping on these uh, projects for these ideas that were, um, you know, affecting problems in these local areas. And, um, some really, really great projects came out of it and incredible learning opportunities for students. Um, you know, 
incredible connections made between uh, UBC students and Macquarie students. Um, and that was a learning process in it of itself. A lot of people will join because they want to have a little bit more involvement outside of their studies on SolidWorks or encoding or doing these very technical skills. But for me, the student team became this organization and it's what made me see that I have the skill set to be a project manager and to see things at a higher level and a higher scope and still know at the deep engineering level what's going on so I can effectively manage that. So that's kind of like how the student team learning stuff impacted my own career. Um, but it also provided me with a huge uh, network uh, to learn from. Um, and one of the greatest pieces of advice that I've gotten from an industry professional was if you, and this was particularly when I was working on um, a financial plan, but I found that the saying uh, applies to a number of different areas in life is if you ask for a reward, if you're asking for money, or if you're asking for a very specific thing, you're going to get advice. Whereas more often than not, if you ask for advice, you'll get rewarded, whether it it's with answer to that advice or with something else because you're expressing interest, you're expressing keenness to learn or to do something that's out of your comfort zone. So that's something that I've carried through with me through my degree and through my career is to make sure you continue to ask questions and you continue to learn because it's always very surprising what the response you might get is. That's so great. That's such good experience that you had. And I've ta talking to a lot of other engineers too. Yeah, everyone always seems to say that the networking is very important. And I think that's definitely a good skill to have for sure. Would you say that you have another university experience that was most memorable other than your involvement in VEST or your co-op as well? Um, probably the friendships that I made. I, I think it's important to say because I've ha I have friends from arts and sciences and other uh, school uh, departments at UBC and no one, you know, you might recognize a couple people in your different classes as you go into your major, but there doesn't seem to be a community feel anywhere like there is in the engineering program. So I think that is something that impacted my experience at UBC because you came out with this really, really solid group of friends and classmates who you got along with because you suffered through everything with and you wouldn't have gotten through it without them. Mm -hmm. That's, yeah, I think I've had a glimpse at that so far in first year, mm -hmm. kind of just making connections even over Zoom um, and just in residence with other first years. And yeah, it's very interesting having to, you know, go through all the, the midterms and the hardships. <laughs> with each other so far. So I'm excited to continue that in the upper years as well, for sure. Absolutely. <laughs> and so you've given us a lot of great advice so far. Is there one single piece of advice that you'd say would be the most important to give to your student self? I would say, um, believe in yourself, keep trying and find your passion and don't stop trying until you find your passion. And like I said at the beginning, what you're passionate about doesn't necessarily have to be what you're the best at, mm -hmm. but try and, you know, do enough and experience enough where you start to understand what you like, what you don't like, um, and what you want to like. Um, because those are going to be the things that drive you to do everything. It's going to drive you to find your first job. It's going to drive you to leave that first job um, and to keep networking and mo like motivating yourself to work with others and learn from others. So um, that's like my retrospective is what I found myself eventually doing, but it's something that I wish I knew would have had, was going to make such an impact is find your passion and you don't have to know what that is, but try enough and do enough, experiment enough, fail enough to know what it is at the end of the day. And so just to wrap up, what would you say is your favorite part about being an engineer? I would say it's constantly being pushed to, um, constantly being pushed to try 
and go a little bit deeper, come up with something that's just a little bit newer, a, a little bit more creative, something that's never been thought of before. Push the boundaries of that creativity limit to understand um, and come up with something that's never been seen before and will um, be the next big thing. Um, that's something that my boss is always driven to mention um, is about patents and patentability and, you know, you can be creative on something that someone else is being creative on before, but what is something that no one else has thought of? What is an application that is totally new, um, not obvious? How can we, you know, take what we're doing and make it into something new? Um, so having a leader like that, who's always inspiring you to think beyond the limits is something that I just, I love every day. That's so great. Thank you so much for all of your advice. I found that really interesting learning all about your advice with co-op and best and then also your career um, experience so far as well. Well, thank you.